Well, greetings, everyone. It is a joy and honor to again be in conversation with Pam Gregory. So thank you for doing this with me today. Oh, it's always an absolute joy to, to spend time with you, Heather, to share. I think we we kind of um, spark ideas in each other and, you know, produce something greater than the two of us, as it were. And, and so it's always incredibly stimulating. And I know you've got a new area that you want to talk about in this conversation, which I think will just be absolutely electrifying for, for people, um, which is super exciting. So I'm, I'm really, really looking forward to sharing with you. Well, before we dive in, let me just say that so many in my community, and I know in your community, are really supporting you in your healing process with your knee. So you're surrounded by a lot of love and healing energy. Yeah, thank you so much. I've been absolutely overwhelmed. Um, you know, someone like you, Heather, who is quite private to, to ask for, for help personally was, um, <laughs> wasn't easy. But you know, it, I've been absolutely overwhelmed with the amount of love and healing and care. It's been a tsunami, really. And I've been touched by every single person and every single message. I'm still sort of wading through them at the moment. But um, yeah, it's, it's been absolutely wonderful. And um, as I mentioned to you before we, we started the recording, I am investigating something natural. Um, and I'll be doing a video on that in the next couple of weeks because it may help other people as well. It's a particular treatment that that um, that could help to avoid full knee replacement surgery because um, the pain when I walk is is pretty severe. And so we'll see. And I'll talk about that in another video and I can go into that in detail. But it it really is is pointing to the the future of medicine. I think what I'm what I'm what I'm um, already embarking on and it's very very exciting so but just to say thank you to everyone in your community Heather and in my community and I'm going to do another video to say thank you because it has been I've really been touched to the core um, with the care that and love that's come through so thank you everybody well and thank you because I think you are sharing some of your journey with this is supporting others in their process but also I think it is such a beautiful example of how we can be in community with each other even across yeah. the globe and be there to support each other as we're all in this transformational process so yeah that's beautiful isn't it that you know wherever we are in the world we can share ideas that can help others and uh, that's how we're really gathering momentum as as digital soldiers i think in this huge transformation so it's it's thrilling even if you haven't got like-minded people locally you'll you'll find them online you know and that's really strengthening so let's dive into a conversation about I mean, this is such a profound time where the energies are accelerating in terms of the transformation that we're in. So I'd love to just talk together about some of how that's accelerating towards the end of the year up to the solstice and then as we move into 2023. Yeah, it's um, it's very exciting. I mean, the, the, this full moon coming up um, with the sun on the great attractor I think is incredibly powerful. The great attractor not only is moving backwards at 600 kilometers a second, um, sucking galaxies in its weight, but it's also emanating, you know, spewing out all kinds of new energy and new information with which we are creating our world. So I, I think that is incredibly exciting. And I see it as quite a, you know, a pivot point of really illuminating issues around choice, choices we've made in the past, choices we're going to make in the future, because I feel, I don't know if you feel the same, Heather, but the choices that we're making round about this time are possibly some, collectively some of the biggest choices we, we're going to make in this lifetime, because this transition that we're going through is so, yes. Yes. It's so enormous. And, and Jupiter is so highlighted here as the ruler of Sagittarius, it's on the world axis, it's you know, it's, it's stationary. There's so many um, highlights to, to Jupiter here uh, that are about freedom, about our future, um, about expanded consciousness, which I think is coming in just in waves for people right now, perhaps around justice and the law. I think that will be quite interesting to see. But yeah, I, um, more and more as we move through these last few weeks of the year, there's an increasing feeling of 
of momentum, isn't there? Because I mean, we've got Saturn and Pluto have already moved direct. Um, we get into January and we've got Mercury, Mars, Uranus then moving direct. And I think by the 22nd of January, every planet mm. is moving direct, every single planet. And that's quite rare, isn't it? That we have every single one. So I think this sense of increasing momentum is gonna carry through or actually probably into March, but certainly we're gonna we're gonna feel it in the next few weeks. I mean, I so agree with you. I think this is such an accelerated time where we're really facing a choice point individually and collectively around letting go of these paradigms of the past, you know, as Pluto's in its final degrees of Capricorn. And I feel like the the eclipses, this full moon, the solstice, all these energies are trying to guide us towards that, I, I really believe that's a threshold point when Pluto makes its first pass into Aquarius in March of 2023. But it is so amazing to feel, like you said, the increasing shifts that are happening. And I do believe that the Neptunian energy of this upcoming full moon is also very powerful in supporting us to dissolve what we need to let go of from the past and to open more to that energy of higher consciousness and our connection with source. And so much of your work and some of what I'm bringing through in my work is about how we can remember our capacity to open to that higher consciousness. And it changes, I mean, like we're talking about with your healing journey, it changes how we heal, it changes how we experience our reality, it changes how we are in connection with each other and with the earth. And I feel like that Neptunian energy is really trying to call us back into that sense of our interconnectedness and our capacity to come back into right balance within ourselves and with each other. And before we got on the video, I was mentioning my explorations in biogeometry. Yeah, that's fascinating. Do you want to talk about those now, Heather? Or Let me just say a little bit about that, and then I hope to do another video on that later. But I just feel like there are, there are so many ways, including biogeometry, that was brought forward by Ibrahim Karim from Egypt, integrating ancient um, wisdom traditions from Egypt with modern science, which again is this understanding that everything is consciousness and that consciousness communicates through sacred geometry. And it is about how we attune to those energies in the earth ley lines, those energies from the sky, and everything is coming in so powerfully right now with those cosmic energies activating the earth energies that I feel like it's so opening the door for us to work in these ways that we can remember from these ancient, ancient traditions that will guide us through this accelerated change into the Aquarian age. Yeah, uh, th th and that's so exciting. And it sort of echoes into the Kuiper Belt objects. And, you know, the ones we've explored so far are all about kind of this ancient connection to the earth and shamanism, but at the same time, this kind of leading edge quantum uh, scientific perspective on how we can manifest our reality. And I think in partly as well, it's kind of Saturn moving into Pisces, the combination of science and, and spirituality coming together, or perhaps the legitimization of, of spirituality in a way that we haven't seen it before, um, you know, on a broad scale. And, and that's very exciting. And I was mentioning in an, another conversation that apparently we're receiving a lot of Lumer uh, um, Lumerian frequencies right now. Ah, interesting. Yeah. Um, which are very, very high frequency. And in those times, they healed in light temples. And the light temples were very simple sort of wooden pole structures just with canvas around them, and but full of crystals. And they healed people with light, with light and sometimes with sound, but they were healing with light. And so as we move gradually into more of the outer planets being in air and the invisible, I think we're going to start to understand the power of the invisible with things like light and sound 
to really shift our consciousness to a different level and, and also start to bring in a very different level of, of healing. Because with the sacred geometry, that is really just, it's like tuning forks, isn't it? It's setting up a particular resonance, which is what a, a chart does, uh, you know, a, a birth chart or any chart does. It's a particular frequency, particular resonance that offers us something. And if it's coherent, that can create healing. You know, well, it's also that understanding of those sacred sites on the earth where the ley lines cross emanate this powerful energy that is our connection with source, with cosmic consciousness. They call it BG3 energies. And that ancient cultures knew how to locate their temples or their healing centers at those sites and work in balance, in harmony with those energies. And as we can remember how to do that again, I feel like we have a way that we can allow that to emanate in the collective consciousness in a way that brings us all back into balance. And I think of it in the same way as if the chart is like a mandala of the self showing all the different facets of who we are, ultimately our path of evolution is to come to the center. Yeah. to connect with that alignment with source where we can see our chart and those energies that we carry as our unique creative expression of cosmic consciousness. But ultimately we come back into that connection with source. Yeah, that is, uh, you know, that is so, so beautiful. And what you were saying about, about sacred sites, you know, as you and I know, because of Rory Duff's work, Heather, the sacred sites are becoming much more activated energetically now. And again, in terms of the location of the, of the temples for ancient peoples, they, they used to build the light temples on um, energy vortices. They were able to determine where the energy vortices were, which were often on mountaintops, and they would use the light temples to magnify those energy vortices. You know, there's so much for us to learn and understand here that is ancient knowledge. It's, a, it's just a remembering, isn't it? And, you know, increasingly I'm thinking of the, of the planets, not just kind of spinning rocks, but are they all a very particular frequency of consciousness? Yes. In, in the class that I'm working with this year, that's exactly what we're working with, how to work with them at an energetic and a shamanic level that we're connecting, coming into relationship with the energies and the consciousness of these planets. Because I feel like they're everything is a manifestation of that cosmic consciousness. And we humans have disconnected from that yeah. and forgotten our place in that consciousness of the cosmos. But we're, you know, as we're talking about, we're finding that awakening happening in an accelerated way on the planet. And I truly believe as we move towards March and Pluto makes its first pass into Aquarius, that is just going to really be accelerating and that will be more and more opening to these new paradigms that can allow us to heal and transform and come back into balance beyond our wildest imagining. Yeah, I really, really agree with you. And it's going to create such a shift in the political and social structures as well. Because, you know, if you look at historically when Pluto has moved into Aquarius previously and doesn't do that often, 246 to 248 year cycle, um, it has always been that's been a power shift towards the people. Um, always, you know, whether it, and, and whether there's a, there was a challenge to the top down structure, which at the time was the Catholic Church or the monarchy or, you know, in these days, perhaps it's government and corporations, etc. Nevertheless, there is there is an inevitable shift of power to grassroots up, no longer top down. And I, I think that will gain increasing momentum through 2023 as we get a glimpse of Pluto moving into Aquarius sort of March to June. and um, you know, we've really got to kind of jump on that wave because that will bring in, I think, many, many new healing technologies. I mean, the, even the glyph of Aquarius is, is frequency and vibration. Yes, 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 yes. You know, the living so energies gonna, of the cosmos. Yes. Yeah. So we're really going to kind of get a better grip on the understanding of how energy and frequency is everything in our world that, again, we've been pretty cut off from, I think, in our so-called modern, sophisticated civilization. 
I think we're really going to get the understanding of light and sound and geometry and frequency and it's just going to transform our world in I think unimaginable ways and I think they're going to be huge paradigm shattering realizations as well. You know, it's interesting that a previous time when Pluto was in Aquarius was in 1543 when Copernicus uh, published his heliocentric theory. And that was paradigm shattering to tell the regular bloke on the street in 1543 that the sun went round the earth and not the other way around. <laughs> and still, you know, we look out the window and it does that. Every day, so, you know, but I think we're going to have more paradigm shattering revelations or understandings about our reality about the cosmos about the galaxies about the earth we live on and even as for us heather as astrologers i think we're gonna have our worlds turned upside down I, I really do in terms of all the diligent study and work we've done over the years i think we are just gonna have to say i'm not attached to it and see what comes in um, that feels more more right for the times and where we're going which is actually so exciting. And I, I do think also it's profound that Pluto, as it moves into Aquarius, will be squaring the lunar nodes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that is really speaking to the profound way in which we're facing that destiny moment of are we open to the transformation that we're being called into? And I also think it's, as the lunar nodes continue to be in Scorpio and Taurus until July, 2023, with that Pluto square, it's also saying what's needing to come out of the darkness, what's needing to come out of the shadows yeah. in order for us to move in these new directions and be in this accelerated process of change. Yeah. So in my own experience, my own personal experience, but also with so many people that I'm doing readings with, it feels like whatever we're needing to face, whatever we're needing to bring into the light of consciousness is coming up in an accelerated way in order to be able to move into these new forms and to be able to move into the higher consciousness in an integrated way. Yeah, it's beautiful. Of course, that's the South Node in Scorpio as well, isn't it? The yeah, release exactly. of toxicity, the old, the darkness, the secrets, the you know, the control, that's very Scorpionic, but it's so interesting that I think you're, you said it beautifully, Heather, that, you know, this, this fundamental transformation that we have to have the courage to take that leap. And what is fascinating, if you go back to the 14th of July, 1789, when the peasants stormed the Bastille and took down the French monarchy, at that moment, Pluto was also square the nodal axis. So that was a fundamental change in the social and political structure, because from that moment, France stopped being a monarchy and became a republic. And so that was huge, really. And so it's going to be it's going to be it's going to be even huger, <laughs> even bigger this time because everything is global. And whatever happens in one country is going to ripple across. But yeah, you, you know, you said it so beautifully that it's having the courage, really, the bravery to step into the transformation that we're being we're being called into. And what will help us, I think, is is Jupiter being in Aries, yeah. starting at this Capricorn solstice, and then July onwards till the end of 24, the North Node also being in Aries. This is sovereignty, autonomy, courage, bravery. Step into the new you, who you want to be. I think that will help us a lot to, to move forwards. I just think it's tied in with that. It's exquisite that Pluto will be squaring the lunar nodes from the end of March through December of 2023. Initially with South Node in Scorpio, North Node in Taurus, but then as you said, shifting into South Node in Libra, North Node in Aries. So it, it feels like such a powerful time of bringing what's been in the shadows, in the darkness, into the light of awareness for the transformation to occur. And then as those lunar nodes move into Libra and Aries, like you said, I think it's not only guiding us into new ways of being and expressing ourselves, but bringing back into awareness Libra, how we can be in balance and harmony with each other, with the earth, with all of life, and develop new forms in Aries that are an expression of that. 
but also the way in which I think it's going to be guiding us in rebalancing the energies of the sacred feminine Libra with the sacred masculine Aries. So it's, it's extraordinary, the, the layers of transformation that these planetary energies are guiding us into to be able to move into co-creating the new earth, the Aquarian paradigms. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a big year. I don't know how you feel, Heather. I feel 2023 is such a big year of endings and beginnings because you've got Pluto for three months going into Aquarius, totally different energy, new beginning. And then it shifts back into the last couple of degrees of, of Capricorn endings, you know, clearing up, shining a, a torch on any corruption or lack of integrity, accountability, transparency, digging up the dirt on anything that we need to see to release because that's the old world and the old system. So we've got this hovering between the old and the new endings and beginnings, but increasingly with Pluto having ingressed into Aquarius for three months, more momentum will be on the beginning side, more momentum will be on the new. And, you know, again, I don't know how you feel, but when people say, you know, what's going to happen next year? Astrology, what are the stars say? I'd say, well, what would, what would you like to happen? <laughs> Well, well that, that's beautifully topic. said because we're co-creating with those. Yeah, yeah. we're co, you know, producers, participants. So, what would you like to happen? You know, astrology is half the picture. We're we're weaving the magic. You know, we're we're playing the music. So it's so important, I think, that we step into that that position of sovereignty and autonomy and and a sense of our own power in a very peaceful, calm, spiritual way to say this this is what I, this is the energy I want to use to create a more loving, a, abundant, peaceful and compassionate world. And if a lot of us, feel, if the majority of us feel like that, we can do that. We can oh, absolutely. That. You know, as you and I've talked about before, that's Rupert Sheldrake's work of morphogenic fields, that if even a small minority open to that transition, it will change the collective. But the other thing I think you're talking about that we both emphasize is as we're stepping into those ways that we can be co-creators of this new world, it is so critical that it's about coming back to our connection with the heart yeah. and with our connection with that sense of higher consciousness, because I think that's the shadow side of Aquari the Aquarian age that can emerge is if we stay caught in our minds and that left brain way of being that has led to our disconnection from Absolutely. source from each other, then we can actually be creating and manifesting the shadow side of the Aquarian age. But if we come back to the heart and that capacity through the heart to connect with that sense of oneness, that we are unique expressions of cosmic consciousness then the capacity that we have to be co-creators of this radically new way of being is incredible. I think it's unlimited, actually. I truly think it's, you know, we're stepping into a very different energy, which is unlimited, but you are absolutely dead right, Heather, so on, because, you know, Aquarius said it's, it's a shadow expression can be hyper-rationalism, hyper-intellectualism. There's no humanity in everything. Idealizing technology. Absolutely. Transhumanism. Absolutely. AI, all of that is, you know, clear as day to see how that is working in society as a possible future timeline. So we have to be very alert and aware in our choice. I'm not I'm not choosing that road, you know, I'm going over here. you know, the natural and the organic, the bumpkin timeline. I'm heading for the bumpkin timeline. <laughs> You know, that's natural and organic, but we have to be very aware. And you know, even our tiny choices, um, I think through the day, is it feeding that particular timeline? And we've almost got to think chess moves ahead. Well, if I if I decide to do this, where where does this lead? You know, if I'm, it, I don't want to get into this in too much detail, but you, uh, you know, it, it, it's so easy to slip slip into everything being digitized in our lives these days. So easy, and that's why I think there has to be a level of of awareness to say, if I do that, that's going to lead to X, Y, Z. And actually, the I think the most important thing in this transition for me is what does it mean to be human? Mm. That's the big question. What does it mean to be human? 
because to be human you have to be rooted in your heart you have to stay in your heart and have those feelings of love and compassion and empathy and that's vital to make sure we don't go down that that dodgy robotics ai route that's all about you know the as you say the idealization of science that that is so beautifully said what does it mean to be human and what are we here for because I think part of, you know, as, as you and I talked about in an earlier conversation, I do feel like we're in this larger cycle of human evolution and shifts in our collective consciousness and that we are coming out of that Kali Yuga, that phase of ignorance where we've forgotten the capacity that we have as humans to open to this higher consciousness. And we've needed to explore our sense of individuation and separation and be caught up in that analytical left brain way of understanding things. But now we need to come back into balance. And I think that is, as you were saying earlier, where we're integrating the ancient wisdom with modern science and we're rebalancing the left brain with the right brain and the sacred feminine with the sacred masculine to remember our capacity as humans to open to that higher consciousness. And then I think computer technology, the internet, they're like training wheels, yeah. helping us to remember our capacity to be interconnected and the increasing telepathic abilities that we'll have and levels of higher consciousness that allow us to communicate with each other, communicate with the cosmos in ways that we've forgotten, but we are capable of that. Yeah, beautiful, Heather, because we're developing a spiritual technology, an inner spiritual technology, so we don't need the gadgets. Yeah. Yeah, so well said. And that's that's where we're headed with these new, um, well, actually very old abilities, such as telepathy and healing and you know, all of all of that side of life is is gonna it was coming online already. People are talking about it all over the place and a much greater psychic sensitivity that people are experiencing. And so isn't that wonderful to think we can abandon the gadgets in future and we can just be human to human? You know, that'd be thrilling. And the other side of that, because I think that is already happening, I think we're already feeling that increasing, dissolving, again, with Neptune's help, of our sense of separation from each other. We're more and more attuned to those energies in the collective consciousness, our interconnectedness with each other. But then it really requires us to be working that consciously. And that's where I think some of the ongoing energies with south node and scorpio north node and taurus and the active role of chiron uh, is how are we letting ourselves heal so that we are working through the trauma the wounds from the past that can color our, the ways that we project onto others or react to others in a way that keeps us in those destructive paradigms so i feel like it's such an accelerated time to be working our own inner process to heal in order to open to these ways that we will be moving into higher consciousness. We yeah. can't do the spiritual bypass and go into those spiritual technologies and higher ways of consciousness if we don't integrate it and heal and be in alignment with it. Yeah, absolutely. And it's interesting, um, just two days after the Capricorn solstice, Chiron becomes stationary direct. And that's always a very powerful time, isn't it? When, when a planet stations, or an asteroid in this case. So there's something about the, the, the ability to heal, or maybe new technologies coming in to allow us to heal, that I think is very, very powerful all, all around that Capricorn solstice. I think it's it's just immense. That is going to be a really peak moment for us. And that's why it would be good for, for people wherever they are, if they can get together physically or even online in big group meditations, because the groups always magnify the energy. But that's going to act as a very powerful portal, I think, to another level. I can see a lot of people being awakened and upgraded around the time of that Capricorn solstice. Well, and as you, I know that you've been uh, doing meditations at, at on ley lines and sacred sites 
around the solstices and equinoxes. And, and Rory Duff's work is so much about that. I think it's such a powerful time for us then to open to those energies that will be informing us about yeah. these new paradigms that we can move into. So I, I do believe that as we can allow ourselves to be in this change process and open more to those right brain ways of knowing our intuition, our capacity to attune to the guidance that's coming to us, then, then we truly are co-creating the new paradigms rather than feeling like we have to devise them or invent them from within our own consciousness. Absolutely. And it's our interaction with the land, isn't it? It's a, really what you're saying, our interaction with the land, our interaction with the particular energy lines that we're living on or meditating um, on, and also the biogeometry work that you're doing now, Heather, you know, finding the right spot for you to really amplify your own healing energy. I mean, not only the Lemurians, but I think the ancient Egyptians, you know a lot about this with the leading groups that they were absolutely world class at this, weren't they? Do you want to talk about a little bit of, about that? Because I know you had a very powerful um, trip out there recently. Well, like you're saying, it's really extraordinary when you realize that these cultures and, and you know, dating back 12,000 years, you know, and I think this also ties in with Atlantis and how there was that very advanced understanding of these spiritual technologies in Atlantis. But in ancient Egypt, as, as you were saying, they knew how to work with the energies of sound and light for healing. They would have dream temples where you would be working with these power spots, with the earth energies that would guide you into those that healing energy and higher consciousness to then be guided through your dreams to see what you needed to be on your own healing journey. But at the same time, they were doing brain surgery in ancient Egypt. <laughs> so they had that advanced knowledge of technologies at that level, but how to integrate it and that understanding that I think we're needing to come back to, that we can have these advanced technologies that we're working with in harmony with these energies of the earth and sky and how being in that harmonic balance is ultimately what is not only healing for us, but allows us to expand our consciousness and be manifesting in extraordinary ways. Yeah, so absolutely. That's a big shift in the paradigm of the Aquarian age is really coming back into that sense of what it means to be in balance, in harmony, rather than humanity dominating everything around us. It totally. I mean, beautifully, beautifully said. And, you know, we think in our modern day civilization, we're at the we're at the peak of civilization. We're so sophisticated. I mean, we're just barbarians, really, compared to you know the ancient peoples. And and what the ancient peoples um, very much understood, as as you've so beautifully expressed, Heather. But it's also coming through in the archetypes of the Kuiper Belt objects. It's this constant harmony with nature, harmony with Earth, harmony with the cosmos being at one, that we are part of nature. We don't dominate, we don't exploit, we are a harmonious part of nature and we will do nothing ever to hurt the earth or nature. Or, or And that's, that's, I think, where we're headed with new earth. That sense of sensitivity, oneness, connection that we've lost in our modern era, that is a huge part of new earth and that's a huge paradigm shift. And therefore that will upturn the medical model, the political model, the financial model, the educational, the legal, you know, it will not turn all of those old systems in my view, because what will be absolutely fundamental is that connection to the earth and the harmony. And that will, that will define everything in society. Yes. Yes. That's your, your you, you know, the core, that's your start point. Oh, beautifully said, beautifully said. And, you know, for the ancient Egyptians, that was their understanding of the principle of ma'at, that everything is meant to be in right balance, right harmony with everything else. And that you're the, we were meant as humans to follow those principles of ma'at, which were about being in balance and harmony. And that if you're out of balance, then it, it will lead to either illness or 
difficulties in relationship or difficulties in the community, and then you look at how to come back into right harmony. So I think what you're saying is just beautifully said, and it also highlights, as you were saying before, as Pluto's in the final degrees of Capricorn, I think it, we need to welcome the ways in which these old systems are deconstructing. It's creating a lot of chaos, a lot of turmoil and confusion in the transition time. But if we can see what we're moving towards, then it's incredibly exciting as opposed to feeling like somehow we need to shore up these systems that are crumbling. No, we actually are moving into completely new paradigms, but we have to go through the death to get to the rebirth. Absolutely. And, you know, don't give life support to what you don't want. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. You know, because, you know, we don't want any of that. And, you know, it, it's, it's, it's kind of like the first law of, wing, law of wing walking, you know, don't let go what you're hanging on to till you're hanging on to something else. But and that's why we have such a grasp towards the familiar and the tangible that we've known. But we have to trust the invisible right now to move to something which is much higher frequency, but it's invisible. You know, we, we just pitch our wagon to a to a star and you know, our, our, our realities, I think, Heather, and, you know, I, I don't know how you feel about this yourself, but they're so different because people say, you know, well, wh what's it going to be like going through this? And the analogy I've used recently is, well, we've all had the experience of taking off from an airport on a windy day and at the lower levels of altitude you get very buffeted and it's going you know it's quite scary you're going to fall out of the sky but if you can you sort of penetrate the the um layer of cloud and get beyond that turbulence you over the same geography you have a very smooth ride and so if you substitute frequency for altitude i think our, our experiences of reality are going to be so different depending on where we're pitched you know if we're focused on the nightly news it's going to be pretty lumpy and pretty rocky because you know oh yeah everything the whole world's in turmoil you know and it is at that level it's awful you know the war the poverty but we don't solve that awful suffering by staying in the same hamster wheel we've got to get to, we've got to break out of that that hamster wheel because you know just living in this little little road where I do um in a rural area back onto an organic farm and I've got kind of 10 houses around me, my reality is utterly, utterly different from my neighbors just a few yards away. So you can live in the same space, but have a totally, you know, this same little road, but have a totally different reality that you're experiencing, depending on what, what's feeding you, um, where your attention is day to day. Well, that's, that's, that's so profound because I think you're also talking about what is your level of consciousness in how you're engaging with what's going on around us because to get caught in the news, caught in the chaos, lowers our consciousness, brings us into that energy of fear or anger or confusion. And, it, and when we can, I think, come back into connection with nature, come back into connection with our hearts, with that connection with cosmic consciousness, then we, as you said, we can see it from a higher perspective that this is the chaos, the deconstruction preparing us for the rebirth. And the other piece, you know, my background was in cultural anthropology. And I think in modern times, we've forgotten what they knew about rites of passage, that to go through a metamorphosis, to go through a profound transformation. You have to be willing to let go of the identity and the paradigms of the past and be in a liminal period, a time of not knowing, the yeah. time of mystery. And that's actually when the transformation happens to then allow you to emerge in a new way. And the image I use a lot with people is that metamorphosis of the caterpillar to the butterfly. You know, we are in that time where we're in the chrysalis. Everything is dissolving. Everything is falling apart. And, and the poor caterpillar is thinking everything, you know, this is, this is just a mess. Everything is <laughs> gone. But it's not about trying to reconstruct the legs and reconstruct the form of the caterpillar. It's being in the mystery in order to then emerge in a radically new way beyond our wildest imagination. 
That is so beautiful because if you, you know, great analogy, Heather, because if you said to the caterpillar in a very short time, you'll have total freedom to fly, you know, several yards off the ground. You can visit trees and flowers. You can go anywhere you like. Caterpillar said, don't be crazy. I can't find <laughs> a centimetre in this, in this chrysalis. Don't be mad. But, you know, so that's the, the, the degree of the paradigm shift, isn't it? And the transformation. Yes. And so I think that's a beautiful analogy because it really is. You know, we're in the chrysalis and saying, are you crazy? You know, I'm never going to get to those, <laughs> those levels, you know. But I, I believe, I absolutely know that we will. I mean, I absolutely know because people are already experiencing um, those kinds of levels now. And they are the pioneers that are bringing that new energy beautifully said and I also think tied back in with what you said earlier that that first pass with Pluto into Aquarius is going to give us glimpses yeah. of what we're moving into and then it goes back into Capricorn and back into completing the deconstruction that needs to happen but with gifting us with that sense of yes we are moving into these radically new ways of being and then by the end of 2024 when it fully moves into Aquarius and as we know from Murray Duff's work, the Earth's energy ley lines really come into higher harmonic resonance with each other. We'll be prepared then to be emerging in the, with our wings and in these radically new paradigms. That is what is so exhilarating about this time on the planet and that we've each chosen to incarnate to be a part of this change process. Yeah, we're the we're the we're the ground crew. We're the pioneers for New Earth right now, and and you know that that's a huge privilege, but it's it's also a responsibility that almost you've got to be you've got to sort of jump yourself twelve years on and look back at these times and say, am I proud of the role I played in that transformation? Can I stand tall that I did every possible thing I could I could to help humanity in whatever small way? I'm a piece of the puzzle to get to a, a, a more beautiful world. I, I think that's that's really important. And it's so interesting with Pluto moving back into Capricorn from June till the end of next year. I, I keep getting this image of, you know, the bulldozer with the wrecking ball, you know, and another thing. You know, and, one final thing you know, and another thing. You know, take that sort of thing. Because then in 2024, we've got that beautiful conjunction between Jupiter and Uranus, yeah. which I see as another jump in consciousness. Yeah, an accelerated time of change. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful. And then 2025, we're away with, with you know, all of those, those shifts of the outer planets from earth and water into fire and air um, that are going to happen more than 25, 26. But it's interesting, isn't it, Heather, that even now you've got several very important um outer plants, Kuiper belt objects that are shifting sign, you know, and because they've got such slow orbits of 300 years, Sedna 11,400 years, the fact they're shifting sign round about now in the next few months also suggests an ending and a beginning, doesn't it? Big time. Well, and that they're signaling these larger shifts in consciousness that we're in, that again, I think if we can hold that awareness that we're, we're in this intensity that we're experiencing in our day-to-day -day reality, but these Kuiper Belt objects are talking to us about these larger eras of human development and evolution and consciousness that we are on this threshold as they're shifting signs that are taking us into a whole new era of our human consciousness so that we're, we're holding the space for being on that threshold and participating in that transition. Yeah, and I think it's it's immensely exciting that at the Capricorn solstice, we not only have Jupiter at zero degrees of Aries, we've also got Manwe at um, 20, I think it's 2933 of, of Pisces. So it's it's really at the zero degree point of Aries, and they're both on the world axis. And it's, you know, it's okay, Jupiter has a 12 year cycle, so it's fairly frequent, but it doesn't come to zero of Aries on the Capricorn solstice. But the fact that Manwe is there with an almost 300 year cycle at the same point, I think is extremely significant to, to, to signal a, a, a big, big new beginning. And I see Manwe as one of the big symbols of, of new earth in this. So that's a big promise round about that Capricorn solstice. So I think it's perhaps really helpful for people to set a very clear intention of um, 
the state of being perhaps, not so much who they want to be, but perhaps the state of being they mm. want to experience as we go into 2023, because that strikes a tuning fork, doesn't it, at the solstice and equinox for the next three months. So who, as we enter 2023, what do you want your state of being to be and what contribution are you going to be making to building new earth? And how can we continue to open to the consciousness of these planets that are trying to guide us? I mean, that's the other thing that I think we can become increasingly aware of, that we, we're not alone as humans trying to struggle with how to be in this transformational process. But as we're awakening and opening to our interconnectedness with all that is, these planets are trying to support us and help us. And the energies of the earth and the sky are with us in this. So then we can feel like we're being carried and held and supported through this transition and not in our own separate consciousness trying to figure out how to navigate it. And that to me is, is so profound to feel like we can really experientially come back into that connection and relationship with these energies around us. Yeah, that's really, really, really well said, because, you know, very evolved people, some of whom I know, can actually hear um, plants speaking to them, talking about their different medicinal benefits. They can hear trees speaking to them. You know, they can hear the planet speaking to them. So this, again, is getting back in, into this sense of harmony with all sentient beings, all all living things. And that that will include rocks and crystals, you know, not just plants and trees and birds and animals. So. And, and I think the animals really are a higher species, constantly trying to support us and love us and, and, and teach us as well. So we have this whole tapestry that we've been, as you say, so separate from and felt we had to dominate and, and exploit for our own profit. And that is going to be a massive shift, particularly out of Pluto moving out of Capricorn, materialism, ownership into something which is just much more flowing with all that is, all that exists. And it's almost like a pantheism, isn't it? That every, you know, every living being has a spirit and has a divinity um, that we can communicate with and share. And that is just immensely exciting, I think. I mean, I sense this a little more because I'm very, you know, big love for animals and on, you know, my, well, they're not walks now, they're kind of hops. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that will change soon with two sticks um you know just talking to the to the ponies and the donkeys around here and I sort of chat to them as I go and I've, I've got a stronger sense of connection and empathy and they probably think I'm quite mad but for me there's a, a, an opening uh you know it, I have a stronger sense of tuning into how they are feeling today yeah. than I had before so I think that psychic sensitivity is happening to many many people um you know, which is wonderful, isn't it? I mean, that that's one of the most exciting journeys we can possibly go on to becoming the new human. And I do believe that we had that capacity in the past. We've lost connection with it, but it's coming back. And it yeah. is exhilarating that it's coming back. And the term for it that I would use is panentheism, which is that understanding that everything is sacred, everything is conscious, and the consciousness is in all that is and beyond all that is. But that when we're, it's, it's like we've been deaf and now we're hearing again and coming back into that psychic capacity to attune to the plants and the animals and the stars and the planets. We can be back in conversation again. And I think then we know that we're, we, we can feel that we're supported and guided in this transition time. Yeah, it's beautiful. And do you think the Kuiper Belt objects have, have been discovered recently to remind us of those capacities? Yeah, absolutely. And I think to, again, to take our perspective into a more expansive understanding of the cosmos, rather than feeling like we're in our isolated solar system with the solar hero at the center, our sun. You know, I love Ruger's book, the sun is also a star that we're <laughs> part of this larger galactic awareness and consciousness. So I feel like as our consciousness is expanding, our understanding of the cosmos and of the universe and the galaxy is expanding. 
Yeah, absolutely. I think that's going to be a huge part of Pluto in, in Aquarius, a huge part because ruled by Uranus, that's very linked to aviation. So I think it's going to be a lot of space travel and, and, and far galactic travel because we are all galactic beings. We've just totally forgotten that. We just think we're little earthlings with no connection to um, those other beings out there. But that's where we came from originally. You know, we are made of stardust. We're not descended from, you know, chimpanzees or, or anything. That, I think that's been proven scientifically. So, you know, this remembrance of being a galactic citizen, I think is going to be immense for us in, in this paradigm shift and, and beyond exciting. I mean, I, I think the future is kind of unimaginable, really. I mean, mm -hmm. it's interesting, I've mentioned this in another video, but in the north of the UK currently, there is an airport being built for flying cars right now. Wow. So, and, you know, I think we are all going to experience flying cars in our lifetime. They're doing it, they started, I think, in 2020 to build that airport for flying cars. So this whole area of out there, of air, of, of space, of the galactics, of aviation, I think all of that, and I think travel is gonna be speeded up just immeasurably. And to allow us to, maybe all of us to explore the galaxies in unimaginable ways. And that's gonna be, that's gonna be the richness of our life experience. It's not gonna be about buying stuff and posh dresses. You know, it's gonna be utterly, utterly different and and so much more profound than we've ever known and we'll live longer i believe oh. you know because if you think aquarius is about youth and pluto is moving into that and it catalyzes whatever sign it's in we're going to get a lot more age reversing technologies you know bring bring them on i say <laughs> That's great. You know, before we stop, let me just say that I think that's so interesting, too. You're talking about the importance of moving beyond that materialism and that sense that this third dimensional reality is our only reality to as we move into these new forms of consciousness. I mean, as as I'm sure, you know, so many people that have talked to, or been in interaction with extraterrestrials and these ways of space travel that are we're capable of as we move into higher consciousness. So often it is about working with consciousness yeah. as opposed to technology. Yeah. yeah and yeah. so again, what we're capable of as we get beyond that materialistic sense that it's only what we can see and what's tangible and can be touched that's real, I think we're going to be opening to whole new ways of healing, of, of space travel, of interacting with each other, of, of being able to be back in connection with the galaxy as galactic citizens. But until we can move into that higher consciousness and come back into balance and harmony, we're not safe to be out there interacting with the galaxy and carrying this out of balance way of being beyond our earth. So I think the planet is in this really powerful time of alchemy and healing and transformation to enable us to reconnect as galactic citizens again. Yeah, beautiful. And to stay rooted in the heart as your anchor, uh, I think is a really big part of that. But, but the energy is gonna go quickly when those outer planets, you know, Pluto into Aquarius and ultimately Uranus moving into Gemini in 2025, 20, 26, it's quick, isn't it? Air is super quick, so I think, society and our experiences are going to be developing so fast it isn't going to be the kind of um density that we've had in our lifetimes it's going to be utterly utterly different but staying rooted in the heart to me that's that's our anchor staying connected to the earth rooted in our hearts and they will be great um navigators for us in whatever comes i think no oh, it's a beautiful note to end on so thank you thank you for being in this conversation and thank you for, for for all the profound work that you're doing in helping us move through this transition time. And you too, Heather, you're doing some magnificent work, very unique work, looking at the, the bigger cycles, the work you're, you're starting to investigate with bio biogeometry, I think will be incredibly powerful as another piece. So, you know, just thank you, thank you for your shamanic background, all that the healing you bring to the world as well. So, so God bless you. And I, I've loved this conversation. It's been wonderful. We never quite know where it's going to go, but it was. It's just... <laughs> well, blessings to you and blessings to all of you listening. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Lots of love.